Hey, this is Sully, just starting off very quickly. If you like these beta flight run-throughs, let me know down below. Also, give me a like and a thumbs up if you want to see more. And leave comments on what you'd like to see. I'm always open to that. Hey, everybody, this is Sully with Five Freaking Onion Rings. Uh, I always say that, and I don't really have a company named Five Freaking Onion Rings. So, this is Sully, Chris Sullivan, coming at you. I have beta flight 4.0-1409 that UAV Tech has released for F3 boards, if you're like me and you fly some older quads or you fly uh, some micros, they only come with F3 boards. And instead of paying to upgrade, heck, there's a lot of life left in them. So UAV Tech is nice enough to drop some performance editions, which have a lot of the F8 of Flight 4.0 F4 uh, software, or a lot of the updates are now in the F3 ones, since they're cut for uh, memory issues, to not enough space, basically. So you can go to this website, which I'll have a link down below, uh, read about what's cut and what's still in, and it basically puts in all F3 targets, get RC smoothing, which is worth it, throttle boost, worth it, I-term relax, worth it, gyro low pass, worth it, worth it, worth it, worth it, all of it's worth it. That's the easy way to put it. I am flashing on a UK65 that uses the Crazy B F3 FS. So we just click the link, save it, and uh, once it's saved, we're going to jump over to Betaflight Configurator. I always get worried whenever I show my screen because I never know what's going to pop up. Brothers out there, if you hear me, give me an amen down below because you know what I'm talking about. So, we're in here. It's so much easier if you just auto-connect. Don't hit your microphone. Plug it in. Bing, ding, ding, ding. Uh-oh. Virtual COM port. Firmware, and you see Betaflight 4, which is what I already have on here. But I do not have this version of Betaflight 4. So, first off, I'm going to check. I just need to know my port, USB-CP. And TBS Smart Audio on UART 3. So remember that. I always check the important things before I activate bootloader. Now I have never flashed this, so yeah. Don't know how this is going to go. We're going to activate boot motor. <laughs> boot motor. This is pretty simple here. Uh, since I've downloaded it, you're going to load firmware local down here. And then we're going to find the one we downloaded. As you see, I've done a few here. But right now I'm on Crazy B, F3, FS is Fly Sky, and FR is First Ski. So, Beta Flight 4. All right. Once we've downloaded it, Flash Firmware. It's erasing all my lovely settings. Hopefully, I won't have to rebind this, but we'll see. Albert Kim has a good way on rebinding these micros that have the receiver built in. And I uh, might be trying that out in a little bit if this doesn't work. So, that was fast. USB successfully closed. Can I connect? Coming back in. Word of advice. Uh, so, whenever you do flash a new one and you plug it in, once you plug in the USB, all you have to do is hit bind on your remote and turn it on and it instantly binds. So, that will save you a lot of trouble. Uh, we're in here, and we can see we're at 45, 46% usage already, and that's due to dynamic filtering, I believe. Going into ports, going to enable my TBS Smart Audio, save and reboot. By the way, the save and reboot doesn't always work on these F3 boards. Sometimes it does. That time it did. All right. Maybe. Okay. D-Shot 600, motor stop. I normally leave this off, but I've heard that leaving it on for micros is good, so I'm going to take UAV Tech stuff and run with it. 8K, this has to be above 4K for what I'm about to show you with the dynamic filters. And this has 2K is fine. Arming 180, just in case. Receiver, you will leave alone. Do not touch this or you'll do like I did and just spend half an hour forgetting what you already knew. So leave 
leave receiver mode alone. That's built into the firmware. Duh. Telemetry leave on, error mode, OSD, anti-grav dynamic. These you're going to leave alone. Save and reboot. So the only real change there was D-shot and my arm angle. And coming back in. Oh, this works much better. Yep. So D-shot, just double checking all my settings. Port, smart audio. All right, power and battery. I always set these low due to the fact that these micros just instantly drain the battery down to your normal resets, presets. Failsafe, I'm going to leave that alone. You do want to check to make sure your failsafe works. PID tuning, here's the fun stuff. I'm not 100% sure smart feed forward works, but I'm going to leave it. I term relax, I do want on. This is the main reason why I like the performance, or the, yeah, the Beta Flight 4. I love our turn. The I term relax and set points good. Throttle boost, I'm going to crank it up a good bit. That way I don't have to jam the throttle and I can catch all my flips and rolls. I'm leaving PIDs the exact same. I'm going to set my rates. I think I did. Yeah, okay. My rates, my rates, my rates. Hit save. And here's where the fun stuff comes in. So we're just going to change to disable here. We're going to change this to 200. And that's the only change in here. This is only for beta flight 4 and above, only with the dynamic filters on. And your mileage may vary, but this is UAV Tech. Uh, he has a great explanation. I'll link to his video down below. Great explanation on this whole thing. And I will say that several of the F3 and F3 4 boards I've used, that has cooled my motors off considerably and pretty much done everything I love. So I'm going to continue on. Anti-gravity mode. I don't think that matters as much with these little tiny whoops, but hey, whatever. A receiver, like I said, once you, you're about to hear an alarm here because I don't have any voltage, but once you uh, turn on your, or plug in the USB of this UK65, you just hit your bind, come up, and you're instantly in. Now you'll hear my alarm, but I'm going to turn it back off here. These RC smoothing filter this is one of the main reasons i always try to run a performance version on my f3 boards so i can get filtering here it's a minor notice but whenever you switch out and you use something different you can actually just feel it and it might be a placebo but not for me maybe i don't know might be a placebo i don't think so though uh 19 I always change these just to keep things from, I don't even know why anymore. Arm, aux one, angle, horizon, aux two, aux two. Now I have heard, let's see, I don't care about beeper. Maybe I do care about beeper, aux five. I don't think this has a beeper. Uh, that's aux three, okay. All right, pre-arm, launch control. Do I want launch control? I'll leave that off. This is fun as heck though, so uh, yeah, launch control is awesome. Adjustments, servos, motors, I don't use any of these. OSD, I will set this up in a minute. The other change you need to make, get dyne all right so you want dynamic notch range set dyne set dynamic notch range high and you want that's it that's actually the only change you want uh, and that's it. We're going to hit save. Reboot. Double check my settings. Should be good. 
Make sure CPU load never goes much above 50. Arming disabled. Oh, that's cool. Current draw, 3D fix. I do find it funny this can actually tell your current draw. Like, this is the smallest quad I ever had, and it has the most features I've ever seen. So, yeah, fun stuff. Uh, this is all good. All good. And that is going to be it. Now, I am going to show, if you have not done so, UAV Tech also had Beta Flight, the newest, newest version. We're going to disconnect here, turn it off. The newest version as an app in the Chrome, not in the Chrome store, but it's an app you can download and sideload. And it is really good. Um, so I do like configure 10.5. The main reason being it has uh, different OSD options. OSD is the reason why. Um, I like my timers. Some people don't like on minutes. And come to think of it, I really don't care about on. I really don't. I care about fly. Fly mode, craft name, throttle position I like. MAH drawn, I like, since I have it. Average cell voltage. It will never say four when you're flying, ever. Not on these small things anyway. Okay. G-force, if this pulls G's, that's hilarious. All right, now one of the things when you get, if you're in regular beta flight 10.4, these options are just called unknown. And I quite honestly don't know what most of them are except flip arrow. I'll see what flip arrow does because I have turtle mode. Um, GMR stack, anti-gravity just flashes a little thing for you. I don't mind that. Uh, that basically flashes anytime anti-grav is active, which is pretty cool. Uh, I would do altitude, but this has no barometer. Can I do power? I think it could draw power. Yeah, let's do power. Okay. There we go. And... Can't do speech, can do battery, RSSI. Oh, I have RSSI. Like I said, this one has the most options I've ever seen for a quad. Especially for it to be under $100. That's pretty cool. Okay. Min RSI. Max current, altitude, I don't care about black box. I do want max G-force. If I could do max ESC temp and ESC, or I don't think these work, so. Yeah, there we go, save. So a lot of these, um, it's beta flight configurator 10.5. Just gives you a couple of more options, uh, basically from motor diagnostics down, instead of being unknown, they are known. And I'm pretty sure it has other settings, but right now, since it's beta, I don't know. Uh, we're going to save, and it is time for a test flight. All right, so we're starting off here, and uh, just a forewarning, I'm not very good at flying on the inside. But taking off, this is the first time I've been able to whip around and feel comfortable with it. The uh, Always check your motors on things like this to make sure that you don't have any heat issues. And I did, and you know, it, it actually came down perfectly cold. Um, yeah, other than that, it flew like I expected. Uh, actually, almost exactly like I expected, which is great. Um, there were some high term key oscillations, and uh, that's mostly because I didn't set key gains to anything, I just left them stock. But other than that, flight felt amazing. Uh, 
you won't notice the AG flashing because it was, wasn't jamming the throttle very much, but it was definitely a fun flight. Uh, first time I've ever been able to do S turns without a problem, so throttle boost is really good, and you'll see that coming up in a second. Otherwise, it's just me flying around. I've got kind of a small area here, almost whipped into myself there, but that's okay. And did again, felt the breeze, the, the rush of the power wind, and, you know, blew me away. And, um, yeah, it was just kind of a quick little flight around the house, just kind of whipping around, trying to see if I can get some prop wash or whatnot. And it's my first successful S turn and a tiny whoop, so yay, didn't bounce on anything there. Just running back and forth. Um, I do have some camera up tilt, thankfully, on this UK65. It's, it's the only reason I can fly, because I try a couple of times with flat, or in angle, or in rate mode, no, angle mode, uh, auto level, whatever mode, and it was awful, hated it. And as it is, this actually flew pretty good. I do want to jump over in a second and uh, show you what the arrows do with some of the crashes and um, yeah it was a fake out there I thought I was gonna run into myself yeah love it when you fake yourself out and uh, yeah oh wait I didn't fake myself out we're gonna jump over to one more flight so it's not really a flight as much as just so showing turtle mode with the arrow in the upper right corner tells you which way to flip over and that was it that's easy flip mode love it all right this is interesting though, if you have a Lenovo headset um, or one of the Windows Mixed Reality headsets, it uh, has a camera on it, which is cool. But if you do the AMD Control-Shift-R desktop recording software, it will record the output of that camera, which is actually a really good wide, super wide angle camera. Holy cow. That's interesting. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, I'm stop screwing around with this now. That's just plain weird. Holy cow. I learn something new every day.